21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am the 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on, everyone, let's celebrate. We are the children of the sun. I can see you when I look into your eyes. We are the same, and we are light, and we are one. And we can make a difference. Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is our 21st Century Superhuman show, and today I have with me an amazing, scientific, brilliant man named Sean Pikarsik. Hey, Sean, how are you today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Sean, I became really drawn to your pictures of cymatics on, that I started running into on Facebook, and we want to talk today about what you do. I know that you're highly intelligent on the genius level. You have a photographic memory. You've become awakened and begun doing this cymatics work. You're really trained in math and geometry. Um, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved in this science. And then we'll jump in and look at some pictures so people know what we're talking about. Okay, well, uh... I mean, from a small child, I was very interested in science. Uh, I mean, I built my first robot when I was like eight years old. Wow. Stuff like that. Yeah, just, you know, typical childhood stuff for a genius kid, I guess you'd say. But, yeah. I, but I was also, you know, just like any other kid, you know, in sports and so forth. Um, I, did, I did end up going to school for engineering, but I only went about three years before I... Uh, I dropped out. I met my future wife, and um, I fell in love with carpentry. I don't, I don't think we've talked about that part. But wow! I, I fell in the in practical the use of geometry, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and it was just an opportunity to be out in, in the uh, open and, and build and do things with my hands and my mind. And um, I, I didn't see myself sitting at a desk as an engineer. About three years into my school, and I was just I, I lost interest in in that part of it. Um, you know, in hot days, I, when I'm out building some, a house or something like that, uh, I do look back and think, well, maybe I should have stayed in there. But, but then again, there I am here today. I'm revisiting that, that scientific part of my past and, and trying to expand upon it finally. Nice. Uh, although the, my building industry, the, my building experience has helped me a lot cool. with what I do. Well, let's screen share here and let's talk about cymatics and what it is because so have you ever looked down upon the earth floating in a sea of energy and i sean i think that you see the world differently than a lot of the rest of us do you have some kind of amazing broader vision so tell us a little bit about that well yeah i do i well about 30 years ago i had a, a really intense profound vision um I was floating above the earth, and below it was 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 a uh, an array, a nested uh, group of all these patterns. Where it seemed like every country, every weather system, every bird you could imagine, every thing you could ever imagine was all laid out there and relating to each other in these strobing, undulating, rhythmic, different colored patterns. It, it, it was something that I, I remember. Um, because I do, I, I do have a photographic memory. Um, it's something that, that stays in my, my head all the time. I, I seem to be able to draw upon it. Um, like when I look at something, particularly uh, patterns, I, or anything that would have a pattern or structure, I see patterns emerge. Um, I can right. look at a tree and, and see the different hues and a different wow. wavelength, however I, however I feel. And I, I feel that it's related to that vision. Um, so it, it's, it's been with me for a long time and that's what's enticed me to uh, seek it out in the real world. Where, where can I see the same patterns that I witnessed in my vision around us? And with cymatics, I, I think I found the exact same thing I saw in my vision, um, just in pieces though. And I, I, I joke often that it'll take the rest of my life 
to explain what I saw in that vision. It wow. was only a few. Yeah. So cymatics is an expression of life. It is 4D sacred geometry, a higher dimensional tool. So you use some machines that you've made, very simple machines, using sound resonance. Is that correct? And it, it ends right. up showing you these patterns and you can take pictures of them. So the sound is actually going through, is it vibrating in water? And then it's creating these patterns. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So, so what you're looking at in this, in a cymoglyph uh, or cymatics is a, a volume of water that's in basically a pan. It's a, a dish. Um, actually, the, the the one that I use for my machine is actually a uh, a, a takeout container for a, you know like a black container for Chinese food. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a black container about five six inches in diameter. Um, many people use different all different sizes, and that'll that'll reflect upon what kind of patterns and what frequency range. Uh, but basically it's very simple. So I, I take that pan and, it, and it's set upon a speaker facing up. And when, you know, just like a speaker, if you've ever seen one move, when, it's, when, when uh, sound is applied to it, it goes in and out. So when you place it up, it goes up and down. And that vibrates the water. And in a standing wave, it'll, it'll reach a certain equilibrium where it, it's, and it, uh, explain to us what is a standing wave. So, that, so like a normal wave, when you when you talk or a, a beam of light or something like that, it propagates and goes forward and mm -hmm. you know, just continue to go forward forever. But in a in a pan of water, there's a boundary around it being a right. container. So when that when that wave reaches the the edge of the boundary, it reflects back. So what you get is a bunch of reflections. And kind of think think about a billiards table, a pool table whereas the balls kind of bounce around. It's, the same, it's very much the same way. So when you have this repetitive vibration, the rebounding rays will organize um, and produce these and fold symmetries. Yeah. So you, um, you actually colorize this picture. You use a, um, a, a computer tool to colorize it, right? This isn't, we'll, we'll look That's at some right. in just a minute that are the natural colors. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the paintings the ayahuasca paintings that people do when they're seeing the mm. matter, the material of creation, and they're usually, that's what it reminds me of. It's an amazing yeah. picture, really. Right, and that's really what I'm trying, when I do the artistic expression, that's what I'm trying to show is, is uh, yeah, the, these intrinsic uh, patterns that people do see in dreams and uh, psychedelic hallucinations, uh, deep meditation, um, outer body experiences. Right, experiences. because they're the, the, seeing their, more of the vibration of creation, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, th I think so, more pure forms where yes. we're looking at, at the, you know, for the ether itself, where it's, we're, we're not really looking at the material world, but something that is, is unseen yeah. at, at a right angle. Kind of behind the material world, right? You're saying at right, right. angles to it? Yeah, at a right angle, and, and magnetism is known as as being at a right angle to light, and it's mm. kind of the same thing when you look at water. It's it's laying flat at a right angle to us. It's not typical. Interesting. Not typical. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And so one can only truly be liberated when they become completely sovereign. We are suns, not moons. I thought that was a neat comment. I, these are mostly off of your Facebook posts. Um, the strongest magic isn't written in a book. It cannot be taught or adopted. It must be experienced firsthand of the hand, then the mind, and finally the will. Tested and tempered with fire of failure and achievement and noticed even in, in its most subtle forms as your mind is calm, absent of dogma. Magic is self-taught, self-realized, and anything other is someone else's story. And I just want to thank whoever images we're using, uh, open Great. source. That they seem to be out on the web. Yeah, that's that's that has to do with my philosophy. It does it does revolve around the cymatics because I do believe that I call it God in a pan, God in a cap. Um, you know, you you look back to scripture. There's much talk about the waters. Um, right. And the spirit moved across the waters. Yes. In creation. So, and w w what I really see cymatics as, when I look at that middle, I see origination, um, the origin of, of things, the origin of thought, 
creation. Nice. So therefore, we, we can be the same way, where we can emanate and originate rather than being the reflection of other, of other sources. That's nice. what I meant by that. Beautiful. So here's a few pictures. And as you explained, go ahead and tell us, this is the natural color that comes out when you do your cymatics, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, mean, I could use a completely white light array, which would produce no color. Um, but I, on my light array, I have colored filters in, a, in the configuration uh, of the color wheel. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's why the colors aren't produced by the vibration. <clears throat> They're produced by the light array. So if I, if I used a, a monotone one, it would only have one color. Okay. So yeah. let's just go through a few of these and give people a feel for what it's like to see these different patterns. And so when you produce a sound, is it music? Is it just buzz, vibration? What is yeah. producing these kind of patterns? Yeah, almost all cymoglyphs, standing wave cymoglyphs, will be single tone or harmonic tones. Uh, they, uh, music will not produce the repetitive um, action you need for the standing wave. It will in small spur spurts, because I, I do do music cymatics, and they do produce patterns, but they're fleeting. As, right. You know, I saw a couple of videos of those on your site. So, right. so let's say it takes a harmonic that we're familiar with that's kind of famous throughout the ages, which, which would be mm -hmm. something like ohm, ohm. Sure. Yeah, Is something ohm, like uh, that going to produce a standing absolutely. wave? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, and, I, and I, have some, I have videos of ohm being mm. uh, chanted and it produces uh, standing waves. So any, any sustained tone or harmonic will, will give the water enough time to organize. And how do you it. choose the harmonic that is going to make these beautiful patterns? Is it a yeah, frequency so, or? Well, um, I, I go, there's two different approaches. Um, most of my work has to do with the Schumann resonance. Interesting. And scale, in the scale, I use a Pythagorean straight uh, untempered scale a lot of three to two ratios when I do harmonics, two to two to one uh, fifths. Uh, so I use typical music harmonics or I use single tones. So if, if I'm exploring the Schumann resonance and, and or its scale range, um, I'll, I'll just you know use arbitrary points along that, that scale and see what I get. Or I can go the other way, whereas like in these images, I can spe specifically that you're showing right now, I wanted to um, produce 11 fold symmetry, which is very rare. Um, mm. One of the things I, I go after is prime number symmetries because they're, they're just, they're, um, they're unique, uh, just like a, like a prime number is. Um, so I'll, sometime, then, then I'll just use uh, kind of like my intuition to just arbitrarily throw values in there and then all, sometimes they just come out of nowhere and because it, it's it's to produce the symmetry it's it's not very sound science yet there's no known equation or, or logarithm that can be uh, implemented to predict the, the symmetry you're going to get um, and from one container to another it'll be different so there so a lot of people will try to attribute certain frequency to certain geometry and that's mm -hmm. that's false that's okay. not true but you so do like have some bit. you do have some geometric forms laid over this um yes and they but do seem to fit they do yeah and that's that's the beauty of simon glyphs even though they they you can't tie them to a certain frequency they themselves as a whole as themselves are pure geometry every single simon glyph can have a pure geometric form like this overlay. Wow. Every, not my, including my own and anyone else's. Um, they're, they're all very strictly um, looking at it. They're actually, they're shapes. They're four dimensional polytopes, what's called a, I mean, think of a, uh, a cube or a, a pyramid or um, 
it's called a dodecahedron. So there's they're a, not really a flat two-dimensional shape. They are, that's correct. You say they're a, not even a three-dimensional, but they're a four-dimensional shape. Four-dimensional, yeah. So what and, does that mean in like kindergarten terms? Yeah, what, yeah it's really, so you, what you're looking at is, is kind of like a television projection wow. of, of reality. So you're looking at a at 3D moving through time, but in, in a standing wave, it's confined in a, in a fixed boundary, so it kind of lays upon each other. We're all stacked. But so like this is one frame, but if I was to advance this, the standing wave a second forward, that, that shape would flip or have some other iteration. Be moving, right. Yeah, but, but it would conform to that. It would still remain the exact same configuration. Okay. Just in a different uh, orientation. Okay. <laughs> Called mo modes of vibration. It's, okay. It's it pretty complicated. Yeah. And you said this can also give us a sense of how creation works. Yeah, I, I really believe so. Um, you know, like, you know, they, they say, you know, in the Bible, the word. Um, now, is this more of a shot of it without the lights on? That's right. Yeah, that, so that's one of my, that's exactly the same setup, but without the color filters over the light array. Okay. <clears throat> so it just shows black and white. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, sometimes that's of a more interest because it has more contrast. Uh, right. I like, the, I like the color wheel because it, it tends to mix and, and show another dimension of uh, complexity. Right. To yeah, it's very beautiful. And so yeah, here's a good example of um, the, the square. So you get really fundamental shapes out of it. And this, this image in particular, if, if you're any of your viewers are familiar with Walter Russell, yes. this is exactly, yeah, this is exactly the same as one of his diagrams mm. of, um, of cubic light space. So what you, what you see in cymatics is actually very fundamental forms that, that science has has had to discover in much more difficult ways. But here, here it is in the pan showing the work of, of a great scientist um, that may, he may have taken many, many hours or, or years to uh, postulate. Mm. Very cool. And there it is just vibrating through the water. There it is. Yeah, right. Gorgeous. We'll just flip through a few of these because we have some more things to get to here to just give an idea. Wow. And there's that one, two, three, four, five sided. We're going to look at yep. in a minute here. A well, That's, yeah, actually excited the hexagon. The, right. Uh, I'm sorry, for Saturn. Yes. So that's where we are here. This is a NASA picture of Saturn. Saturn's. Uh, pole, right? North Pole. That's right. Yes. And yeah. go, ahead. go ahead. No, and you've laid this the image over it, and we're going to look right. at some other images that this. You talked about the Fibonacci sequence, the Birkelin current. Go ahead, tell us some stuff. Yeah. So on Saturn, uh, there's this mysterious shape at the pole, and you know we in nature particularly planetary levels like this, we don't see such order. Um, you know, it's, it's clearly a hexagon. I mean, just imagine here, if here on Earth that there was a hexagon formed over Colorado. Right. It, it'd be, you know, it would blow us all away. But here, here we are, there actually is one on Saturn. So we have to wonder what, what is causing it. And there's a bunch of different theories. Uh, but the theory I have is, is that it, it's a standing wave. Um, produce the same way that I produce them in a, in a pan. Basically, the, the atmosphere is the boundary, and coming out of the center uh, on a planet is what's called a Birkeland, a Birkeland current. This is a big stream of electricity, and it has a frequency. So you have this pulse, and this pulsing influence that kind of, as, it, as it's uh, erupting, I guess you'd say, out of the pole, it's pushing the atmosphere out and away from it. But in a rhythmic fashion, so as it as the uh, wave, um, as the sine wave uh, degenerates, it it, the, it allows the, the atmosphere to come back in, then it's pushed back out, and this repetitive uh, 
breathing produces the symmetry the same way that I do in a cymatic span. That's my theory. Wow. That's and the very geometry cool. laid out kind of shows how it nests and, and similarities of the different, um, you know, little aspects of the field on Saturn. You can tell that they're not arbitrary, but that there is actually order to it all. Um, very cool. But yeah. Cool. And, yeah, what is that telling us about our universe? You know, a lot of people think, well, it's, it's infinite and it's, and it's just random. And, right. But it's, but it's anything but that. And I think that's what cymatics really um, gives us a hint at is how orderly and how beautifully geometric our, our cosmos really is. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. And then here's one that looks a little more chaotic. Yeah. So, of course, in our, in our cosmos, we also have chaos. But chaos really is just a, per, is a matter of a perspective. So when we look at it, it looks random and chaotic. But there actually is order there. Um, if we looked at it in enough dimensional ways, we could find the order. So what, is what that picture actually is, is a standing wave with too much amplitude. Mm. So it gets messy. And just like if you were to um, try to jump, jump rope and you went too fast with it, it's just like you have to have a certain rhythm in order nice. to, to get it to work. But it doesn't mean that that the jump rope isn't there, though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, right. So I, I think that. That's cool. And here's another one that's a little more chaotic, right? Right. Yeah. So, I, you know, some of my stuff is subjective. I just want to show the different depths and dynamics of water. So, under, under in a chaotic situation, you see a lot of depth and, you know, it's, it's, it's like an abstract art. You know, you can look at it for hours and try to, each person would pull something different out of it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so the water can show us two different, that, that dichotomy, that duality of chaos and order. In our, in our right. Culture. And this is yeah, it's pretty beautiful. I think that's a 30, 32 side. I can't remember. Wow. Mm, no, I think it's 20. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, you know, there's definitely a lot of beautiful, a lot of beauty that the water expresses. I mean, it, the water is a, is a, is a feminine form. Uh -huh. All of create, create to, all of creation really is, but there's this masculine lead. And I, I, I liken it to like a dancer, like to a, a couple dancing. Where uh -huh. traditionally the male leads with an unseen uh, straight intention, and and his partner follows through in a much more beautiful uh, roundabout, um, how cool, fluid, feminine uh -huh. way. So you see that in in the water. So you see the lines of emanation, and that's the intention of the masculine form. Beautiful. And, but but the re but the result around it is anything but that. It's very fluid. And, because water can only, only respond in one way, in, in spheres and circles and spirals and waves. Nice. Uh, ripples. But it doesn't mean that the, the, uns, the masculine form is not there. It's just typically unseen. Right. And whereas cymatics, it really allows us to see both the feminine and masculine aspects of the cosmos Beautiful. at the same time. Yeah. I love it. And this is some of your playing with turning this into art. Yeah, art. Now, that's an unedited image there. That's an, that's, that's an actual photograph. Wow. Yeah, it's, so it, it, that's why I use the color, <clears throat> color wheel configuration. As you can see that, it, that the color wheel isn't, isn't separated nice and linearly anymore. You actually see a, a mix and amalgamation of, of the colors throughout the field and that so that it's a very complex form where at the same time you have you see this simple geometry very and gorgeous that, yeah again it's a, it's just another reflection of life we, we're the same way right you know, we, we're we're very simple in our form yet we have we're full of these complexities of how light plays how our light and our own lives have played out 
I like this, you put, because it's 22, you put, and the key of the house of David, I will lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. And it was Isaiah 22, 22. So you had 22 in the form that came out of this. Right. And tw 22 is considered a, the master builder number. Right. Um, there's 11 is also considered a name. Right. Which yes. That could be applied to cymatics also. And here's another beautiful one. I am water incarnate. I'm its master and champion. Its will is my own and that of God. Very cool. Yeah. 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 It's very personal. And, and cymatics can be that way. Um, it, it, in the water, you'll see expressions that aren't produced by the sound. Um, they're actually, it's an expression of the, of the, of the operator. Um, I, yes. I, I call cymatics modern alchemy. Nice. Um, and just like the alchemy in traditional matter, the, it's the alchemist himself is the product. So, yeah. when, you know, it, when I do cymatics, I'm, I'm gaining something from it. It's beautiful me, uh, about the cosmos really. And, and the end, and the end, at the end, I'm, I will be the gold, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we so, like to say too these days, the world is our mirror, you know, um, this right. creation is mirroring the resonance that we put into it. Um, I believe that. And um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you're, I mean, I have very, there's many cases where my own thoughts and will uh, is emerges or uh, manifest in the water in, mm. in archetypal forms. I think you have some images where there's a dove. And right, we'll stuff. look at those in a minute. Tell us about emergence a minute here. Um, yeah, so emergence is a new uh, science and field of science um, dealing basically with geometry in a very fundamental, universal way. Uh, and geometry is kind of your the background of your training, right? What That's pulled right, you yeah. into this? Yeah, I mean, since I was a little kid, I've, I've built things and been interested in math, science, geometry, um, specifically the form, because I, even though I've been trained, trained and, and taught as a scientist, I'm really an artist. And, right, uh, beautiful. What? Yeah, I mean, it comes back, it comes back to creation again. So, you know, you, you can study the science of emergence and, and keep all the philosophy right out of it. But in its core, it does have to do with creation theory of it starting um, from a simple simple form and then becoming more complex and quantum um, physics really tells us that creation is continually emerging from the field so that's right, that's right. yeah and and, and, and 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 through intimate connectivity also um yes and yeah that's there it's something that really has to do with the arrow of time and we can't get around our past you know even ourselves you know Perhaps even the vision that I had has to do with me looking back through myself, through our mm -hmm. DNA, through the history that's created us. Um, you know, the water, water has memory, so do, so do, so do cells and living, living things too. You right. Know? So, and, and how is that stored? I mean, you think, well, what is a memory? It's kind of ethereal. Right. But not really. It's, it can be made tangible. You know? Right. It, so this is a kind of a pattern of emergence here yeah the e ea which is really interesting if your readers want to go down a good rabbit hole um, google ea and emergence um and, and this this di this diagram in front of you is an orthographic projection of the ea it's basically looking at eight dimensions and sign and the emergence theory claims that every single thing possible in reality can all be re represented within this form right here. Wow. Everything, everything from cells to atoms to more complex, um, in, including the flower of life. Even. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Very powerful. And our creator has beautiful penmanship. I love that. And I love how you have the um, kind of different yeah. geometric forms laid over this one. Yes, the Enneagram. And the geometer is one of your Facebook pages, correct? That's right. Yeah. And I concentrate just on geometry there. But I... Okay. The geometer. 
when I place my eyes upon the water, they look back. Yeah. Beautiful. That, that's a, and you can see there's a little Cheshire cat eyes kind of. Right, <laughs> kind of looking at you there. Yeah. Yes, Noah's hope, and we saw some little doves in this one. And so as yeah, you were so saying, they kind of reflect, and this one seems to have somebody in a yoga pose. Um, right. So and, you know, of course, some of these are subjective, and uh, you have to use your imagination. But the, the they're quite common, actually, which yeah. which kind of raises the question of whether they are just a uh, parallel. Well, you know, I just, find this when I freeze plasma elements. I freeze water under mm -hmm. plasma elements or okay. or, or must organite to um, see what kind of a field shows up in the ice. I've had plasma that was designed to help fix teeth, help teeth heal, and a tooth shows up in the ice. And we just froze an organite water under an organite heart, and actually a heart shows up in that ice. So it is, I think our intentions really go out into the field and it reflects back. For sure. Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and uh, John Stuart Reed, who's one of the leading um, persons in the field of cymatics, he, he mentions he mentions that specific quality that, uh, in particular, sevenfold, seven-sided symmetry, is more typical of a person that's spiritual than not. Mm, interesting. Yeah. It seems so, so you use the Vitruvian man as a lot of the basis for how you perceive things or tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I do. Um, you know, it, has, it, it was derived through my, my, um, my study of geometry. What, what I discovered is the double golden, golden rectangle. If you see that, the, if you're familiar with the golden rectangle, golden spiral. Um, yes. That's the golden ratio. So that's what that's what that we kind of have the spiral here, yeah. Well, is it? Yeah. I wonder if it shows better on this picture. Maybe not, but you have made these different things from right. So there's a the relation that, resonance. That's right. So there's a there's a relationship I found between the square, the circle, and a wave, and you can see that zigzag. That's actually a, a perfect sawtooth sawtooth wave. Yeah, I saw that on a number of your images. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that that function there, I you can calculate the frequency of it, and the frequency of that function is actually the Schumann resonance, seven point eight. Wow. Um, and I and you can take that same function and it it nests upon uh, classical cathedrals, it nests upon the Great Pyramid, our own bodies, like you see in Vitruvian Man. Um, so basically, what it's telling us is that the Schumann resonance the 7.8, roughly 7.8 uh, hertz, is uh, fundamental to not, not only our own body, but the earth and also ancient sites like the Great Pyramid, and perhaps right. even further. Um, so that's one reason I study it. So when I discovered that, it really got me interested in cymatics because I saw not only geometry, but also this a way to explore this specific wave function. Nice. Um, yeah, and and in doing so, mo almost all my cymoglyphs are all produced by the Schumann resonance, mm -hmm. or or mm -hmm. harmonics therein. So, um, almost all of my work is. And, I like this I, one too, which is from the Dendara Temple in Egypt, and mm -hmm. you said the same symmetry as the Aztec calendar and other sites around the world with base right. twenty, and still the key of nine degrees. That's a common denominator of the pentacle square yeah. isosceles and golden triangles. Yeah, so so when you uh, when you look at a standing wave and you realize that it, it is this fundamental uh, radial geometry, uh, you start looking around, you can actually see the same patterns in a lot of ancient architecture. Amazing. So it raises the question, are these actually representations of sound mm -hmm. themselves or, or or you can say because the standing wave is time in a bottle, so right. they can be representations of of music or, or rhythm through time. Right. And a lot of like the Aztec calendar is literally that. It's you know a calendar is uh, a snippet of time. It's a four dimensional form. That's what. And the I Aztec like the way you say they line up to express harmony. 
harmony and time. That's yeah, that's what I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. So they're visual representations of harmony. Cymatics so, and, and the, frozen in stone, and you yeah, the, and that's what cymatics is. The um, the definition of cymatics is a Greek term. Um, is sound made visible? Nice, amazing, cool. So I know you're going to be working on this, the golden mean and the cubit, and you're going to make a new cymatics machine built to these specifications? That's right, yeah. So this is a, some real deep tangent I'm going off of. Um, you know, again, I'm back, back to geometry and, and trying to find form and, and kind of hidden secrets in ancient architecture. Um, is it, it, it's very evident that they used geometry very strictly and uh, Prolific, prolifically throughout their work, right. so it it, it, is, it it so it tends to make me think that there's more information that within these uh, pictographs and carvings that we that we that than there is on the face value. So yes, uh, when I re you know when I dissected this, I found the golden mean throughout the entire piece, nice. which is really strange because this predates. Um, Fibonacci predates uh, mm. Pythag Pythagoras. Very cool. The gold mean was not known to be in existence. Right? Was not known. Was not known to be known. <laughs> At least by period. humanity, right? So these right, are maybe right. beings like from another the dimensional figure, level. Perhaps the figure on the right is much larger than the three figures on the left. And right. this work specifically shows that he is phi proportionate to them. Because if you look at their arm, his is his is his arm is phi is larger in a phi proportionate way, which Very is pretty cool. significant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, come back to me in about a month. I'll have that. Oh, okay. So at the ge geometer, the geometer on Facebook, you'll be sharing some of your stuff. So and I love this. Um, you used uh, cymatics with the um, the Sri Yantra over it. Just is a really nice, beautiful energetic i think it is energetic yeah yeah so you get again you get that you can take that objective beauty that you get from cymatics and apply it to art and it's really uh effective um because again it's not my hand in there so who is who is whose signature can be put on that you know? yeah it's amazing <laughs> just gorgeous well, Sean, thank you so much. I know we could probably talk for hours. I can tell there's just this depth of knowledge and wisdom in you on all of this. And um, well, I, I want to encourage people to follow you on Facebook and check out your the Geometer page. And in the next year or two, I'm going to be branching out and trying to get out into the public and doing um, uh, producing art, art, art installations, but also. Um, maybe even doing uh, light shows at, at festivals or uh, attending conferences and, and other um, examples where I can, I can educate the, the public, you know, maybe even holding my own uh, forums and uh, nice. uh, work, workshops, perhaps. Uh, Living cymatics. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's a, it's a growing field and I think it's, it, it's very important um, if someone really wants to have a, a really, really uh, easy under, way to understand our connectivity and our, and our cosmos. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you for spending the time with us today. And I want to remember, remind everybody to breathe, smile, and love. For by so doing, we change ourselves and we change the world. Sean, we'll see you again on this great rainbow of light. Thank you for sharing your truths, for following your path. And we want to encourage everyone to follow the passion inside themselves because that is where your brilliance lies and your gifts to the world. So thank you again, Sean, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Take okay. care. We'll see you all soon. Ciao. Empower your life as a 21st century superhuman with host Carrie Kiristar Ellis and guests. Navigate these times of great change with Carrie's 21st century superhuman book series, being called the most important books on the planet and guidebooks for our times. You are a creator. Remember to breathe, smile, and love. For as we change ourselves, we change the world. Learn more at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. Oh.